Hello, Cancer Leo Moon Sign people. Welcome to your Taurus Gemini New Moon reading. Of course, we use the sidereal and the Western astrology. The sidereal is the soul astrology. The Western is the Earth-centric ego astrology, which focuses on our emotional response. Your Vedic sign and Cancer is all about your intuitive sense. Your intuitive downloads are coming from a Cancerian nature, which is in Rahu. Leo is in the North Node in the Western. And so, wow, look how powerful of a year you've had so far and this is a powerful new moon it's a super new moon deeply intuitive stuff shalina gig shows up for you as the opener of how you in the recent past have been dealing with your mdt of course if you don't already know these readings are designed for people who are going through the dark night of the soul and specifically those who are healing mdt a very courageous thing for people to do is to confront mama drama trauma as a challenge to be overcome and accepting our divinity I want to check the links below there's a video about mama drama trauma and our divinity now for you as of the recent past you've really opened up to what it is going to take for you to heal your mdt for almost a year now since august 7th when the new moon was in cancer leo that ushered in this new ecliptic season that we are now a year into you are now in your 11th new moon house and so this means that you are opening up to individuals in your close circle networks maybe people at work who are supportive of your healing process and realizing perhaps there's some things about them that you haven't noticed before be they their resistance to assist you in healing this or having compassion for you with this or um Otherwise, in closer groups like friends or cousins, not knowing what you're going through and now you are open to maybe sharing that. So let's see what your present situation is with regard to that. Yeah, you're wanting to actually follow through with these intuitive downloads you've been receiving. With Cancer Leo in the North Node of the Collective Consciousness, what we've been doing over the last year on the planet is expressing ourselves ad nauseum, haven't we? And we've been releasing our humanitarian connection. And so with you having Leo as your emotional, your moon sign, the C that we see is mostly going on underneath it, right? Everything that makes the C what it is, is, is everything that's happening underneath it. And that energy is what propels the ebb and the flow of the waves, okay? And so our emotional state, our moon sign is what propels our sun sign. And so you have this double yang symbol here, very masculine, which the sun sign is, our actions, moon sign is our reaction, our intuitive reactions. And so you're wanting to act on, in other words, this openness. You're, you're ready to, to share yourself, to be yourself, to be real, because you've had a year of really propelling emotionally the planet forward into this self-expression. Cancer is in Rahu in the sidereal north node and that's all about domesticity staying a little closer to home and the mother and so on a soul level you have definitely been connecting to the need to heal MDT having the courage to initiate this healing process is something that is truly remarkable this is a taboo subject but that is why great mother is speaking in your shadow position, you have Isis. And so there is a need to self-care, to self-mother, to really recognize what it is that you need to feel loved, to feel taken care of, not projecting that onto others. That's a huge part of acknowledging mama drama trauma in our lives. We're saying, I am not giving the Given, I'm not given and I'm not receiving the love that I need. So this is what has created the conflict, the confusion in my life. 
and I have to fix it. Now, this is also what causes the rage in us underneath the surface, right? And underneath the surface of what? Our beliefs, our attitudes, our behaviors, okay? And so in that C, we have unspoken beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. What's unspoken is that you don't deserve to be cared for or that you are not cared for in the way that you need to be cared for because my needs are more important. That's what creates the rage. And so as we have full moon energy here, I want you to really pay attention to that because we're going to be coming up on a total lunar eclipse on July 27th which is going to affect you um, because the sun is going to be in Leo. Okay, now Leo is your moon sign, but this is a full moon. I want you to stay tuned for that full moon because it's going to include your third quarter report. <clears throat> Excuse me. Presently, Great Mother is saying it's important for you to have self-compassion as you initiate this process of acknowledgement of your MDT. It's not anything that you caused, it's not something you can cure, and it's certainly not anything that you can control. This is a soul agreement between two souls to assist one another in evolving in self-love and spiritual independence. So on a soul level, you and your mother have agreed to have this experience. MDT is in the material realm, and so it does feel emotion, earth sign, Western astrology, and the Leo, it does feel wrong. And so the self-expression is really strong about that, of course. The cancer and the intuitive download is, is really focusing on this need to ground yourself in self-love, self-mothering. Okay, that's what's coming through for you. It's really important for you right now because it looks like maybe people who are this 11th house energy of close friends, networks, people at work. Maybe your public image may not be exactly what you want it to be at this time. So just be compassionate with yourself. You're expecting, as you go through this process, to learn and live the law and what is the law? The law is as above, so below. And so as you are downloading these intuitive gems of wisdom, you are really wanting to act them out in your life. You're open to acting them out. Look at all this yang energy here. And then you have this yin energy that's really wanting to balance this, Cancer Leo. You're holding the axes, the north node of the planet at this time. I know I've said that to you throughout this year, but particularly with this Gemini new moon, planting seeds of communication, Great Mother wants you to particularly be aware of communicating things that are authentically genuine to you you're out of the stage of denial, in other words. That's huge. MDT is a taboo subject because it makes us confront issues of failure, of the source of our combative and bullying issues in society, our insincerity and disloyalties in society. Because it all starts at home. And so we receive that as a blaming and a shaming as opposed to it being an opportunity for evolutionary development. And so those of us who have the courage to heal this are actually heralding in a new age of self-love and recognizing the veil of MTT. It's triggering you. And so this is a huge challenge for you at this time. You're being triggered by some issues of control, some issues of wanting to cure, some issues of wanting to actually be responsible for healing it in your family as well. Because you're on the path, and maybe you're still trying to convince your mother, or you're still trying to convince your siblings that this is what needs to happen, or you're trying to, um, on the other end of the continuum, some of you may be trying to talk yourself out of the process, um, but I don't think so with the recent past you being open up to it, even though there may be some fear 
Sheila Nagy card says that you're open to the process. And since you're learning to live the law, all of you watching this video at this time really are trying to face the challenge. It just may be unconscious initiative for some of you at this time. Let's say that as opposed to actively working against it or still being in denial. This clearly is stating that you're out of denial, but you're being triggered. You're being triggered by issues of codependency, issues of credibility, many times acknowledging MDT will create denial because we have a credibility problem. Everyone's going to believe the mother over us. I didn't do that. I don't know what they're talking about. What a terrible child to say this. But it's a cycle, isn't it? If she's never acknowledged that she's had it, and her mother's never acknowledged that she's had it, and her mother's mother never acknowledged it, well, then who do we think we are? The hidden influences are the law of Divine Mother. The law of Divine Mother is operating very strongly in your life at this time, and that is the law of actually connecting to how you feel. To that Leo surge of enlightenment, Leo is ruled by the sun, it's masculine energy, and you're wanting to connect to others. And so what Great Mother is saying is that maybe if you do that through the angels, guides, ancestors, the fairies, the trees, the ocean, the nature around you, it's going to activate deeply within yourself the knowing that you have the support that you need. It's not always visible. In other words, it's not always above the surface. And particularly for mama drama trauma, it's rare that it is, and which is another reason we avoid uh, acknowledging MTT. Aside from the fact there's a credibility problem that we might break up the family, there's also the issue of codependency. Well, if they're not okay with it, I'm not okay with it. And so let's just leave this for next lifetime, which is an option. We have free will. Now, you, however, Cancer Leo Moon sign people, expect to be rewarded for your hard work. You expect to be rewarded for opening up to this process, and you most certainly are being rewarded at this time, or you will in the very near future if you haven't already. Now, some of you may have already been rewarded in some way or another for the effort that you've given, that you've invested to this process, but you may not see what you've been rewarded with as a reward. For example, you may now have more time to spend going outside in nature now because of a certain turn of events in your life. You might now have more resources to invest in the self-love and getting the support you need for self-compassion, finding this channel, for example. You might be getting in touch with old friends who you always remembered gave you that unconditional love that you craved, but you didn't recognize it for what it was at that time, and you may, may be reuniting with them or inviting new people that have that energy like them into your life at this time, and they are accepting the invitation. You're receiving rewards for your work, Cancer Leo Moon Sign people. Great Mother wants you to let go of anything that is making you feel less than who you truly are. Now, the prostitute card is all about you making a choice to, as the raw card says, share yourself with people in ways that honor who you are, as opposed to those who do not. And with MDT, because of the codependency, because of the fear of breaking up the family and the credibility problem, we will sell ourselves out time and time again and wonder why the patterns and relationships that we create are unloving. Well, it's because we don't see the benefit in asserting our ground. And as any 
dignified prostitute does only takes clients that she wants at the price that she wants, when she wants, if she wants. Prostitution is the oldest profession in the world, and so it is masculine and feminine. It's the oldest profession because we all have to give something of ourselves in this realm of material life for survival. The question is, are we doing so in a way that esteems us or tears us down? And only we can make that choice once we've become conscious of it. That is what this channel and what the work that I do is about. Great Mother's advice to you is brigade, selfhood. Shine your light of healing. Shine your light of courage. Move ahead with your healing intention. All clear. And as this season grows into the full moon, accept that the intentions that you have set at this time, remember your new moon wishes for Gemini, Accept at that time. Just take a mental note. And since you have the Brigitte card to accept your um, expression, your divine spark of soul inspiration for this life, this incarnation, during this full moon in Capricorn, you're going to really want to realize that whatever intention you set at this time is going to be realized according to what is best for you at this time. So as you set those intentions, what Great Mother wants you to know is that since Gemini is in your 11th house, in the general collective unconsciousness, we see that since your August 7th new moon, which kicked off this eclipse season in earnest, and actually the lunar cycle that brought that total eclipse during the, the uh, full moon on the 21st of August last year. That was hugely powerful. And so you've gone through the first, now we're in the 11th new moon house for you. You've gone through the wheels of this and now you're in Gemini. Now you're in your 11th house. And so these new moon wishes have to do with the motion and activity moving forward. You know, what is it that you want to learn now since coming through this process? What is it that you want to learn about how to connect with that intuitive voice? How to see those reward, rewards and live the law as above, so below. Ask Great Mother for the social ease that you need to connect with people who are supportive of your process. It, it can be very cumbersome as a topic to discuss with people, even those that are closest to us. And this new moon is an opportunity to request this communicative support and the intelligence and diplomacy that you need to do that with social ease, you know, um, more positive daily interactions through your communications with people. Those are the kinds of new moon wishes that will help calm that mental Gemini activity moving forward. We have a total lunar eclipse coming up in July, which will usher in your 12th house um, new moon in August. And so this is kind of taking you over that hump into your next evolutionary phase with MDT. So in your immediate future, you're actually going to be leaving um, MDT behind in the way that you know it now and the way that you're experiencing it now as you open up to this internal wisdom and follow it express yourself and see we have fifth chakra energy here which is mercurial and so Mercury rules Gemini. And so this is what Great Mother's advice is to you it's a full moon card and so that's what's pulling me toward the total lunar eclipse in July Okay, that's going to be with the sun and Leo. And so that's letting me know that you are moving toward closure with regard to an emotional cycle. And the harbinger of this is 
you finally are facing this challenge and opening up to it in ways that you never have before, which is going to cause you to really want to leave behind some attitudes and behaviors about it that you've had in the past, some shame, some guilt, um, some feelings that you have to give so much of yourself in order to hold the family together. You know, what that requires is for you to be ungrounded. And if we're ungrounded, your chakra full moon card, we're not taking care of ourselves. So leaving those types of tendencies behind is where you're headed. You are grounding yourself, so to speak, and a lot more gratitude for the journey as you move forward. You'll do this by embodying a strong sense of boundaries. Boundaries are simply what's okay and what is not okay. What's okay and what's not okay. Now, for some of us, what's okay is for us to continue being the caretaker of others, even though we are in our own healing journey. That is really what still makes us feel whole. That is still what makes us feel useful and secure. For others... What makes us feel like everything is okay is that we have to have a physical break. We actually need to define emotional boundaries. And as we do that and establish those boundaries, do the work to maintain them. So asserting actually that in order for me to feel more grounded in myself, I am going to have to take care of myself. And if the family restructures itself in the way that it needs to restructure itself, so be it. You know, it's going to have to do that. It's going, I'm going to have to let this Ferris wheel go on without me. And for others, it will be that I'm crossing into a whole new threshold. And so the boundary is simply a threshold from one way of living into another. You know, it just depends. It just really depends on the individual and how you are dealing with this emotional phase. Some people have to make a clean break, at least for the period of time that they can diffuse the triggers of MDT. Now, possible outcome with all of this is Demeter. And that is that you will grow more self-accepting through the self-mothering and self-compassion and honoring who you are, noticing your rewards and trusting your intuition that's guiding you in how to express yourself. You will therefore begin to accept your feelings more readily, the truth of how you feel. And that's really important because we see the long term is Adi Shakti. Adi Shakti is telling you that you will, at this point of this phase of your emotional evolution, growth, and healing, have done all that you can at this time. Cancer is in the nakshatra of Rohini in the Vedic astrology, which is very passionate. It's very beautifully composed. It's an abundant, you know, the cow symbolizes Rohini. And the sun is in Miksira, which is symbolized by the deer. And so you have this energy of great mother energy, this very um, fertile cow receiving this kind of beauty that's a masculine beauty that is explorative and courageous but not aggressive. And so you're receiving the information that you need to fully express how you feel going forward. You've done all that you can do in terms of your active work, your above the surface work, and now you're going into following this lunar cycle from new moon to new moon, new moon Gemini into new moon Cancer. You're going into a phase of download. And so what begins as a opening up to what needs to be done with your immediate group of friends, 
cohorts, co-workers, people in your immediate network, maybe even with your self-image. What begins this lunar cycle with that and how to communicate your healing process begins to release and to absolve itself into a primordial mother energy that will download your next phase. And you'll go into that as you accept your feelings. And so accepting your feelings is accepting what it is that you truly want and what you truly need. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And there's so much fertility and abundance in the universe. You know, you don't have to edit and modify yourself. Not that you feel the need to do so, Cancer Leo Moon people. The outcome for you is integrity. And so the integrity is what you have really, really been moving toward, is telling yourself the truth. And it is definitely a truth that only you know. It's definitely a truth that only you can uh, appreciate about how you feel. And it is all about Again, this primordial mother energy that this lunar cycle kind of ends with, it, 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 it climaxes with the self-expression, it climaxes with the self-care, and it goes into this deep internal intuitive space after that where you will have a new sense of self, a new sense of who those are in your life that truly support and love you in this process and of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like, stay tuned for the video on the nodal axes. As you are the North Node and Rahu for the planet this time, you might find that useful. And the links are below for other information that may have been mentioned in this video. Remember that these are general readings. Your actual moon sign could be in your 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th house. These are based on first house readings, so that would modify your reading somewhat, and for some, quite a bit. Thank you again for watching, but remember, above all and most of all, Great Mother loves you, and I do too. Okay, a word on the nodes is that they are typically viewed as too ethereal to be grounded in the world, too um, much of a conceptual aspect of the astrological chart to be really practical and practically interpret it as meaningful in your life now, which is why they are associated with the soul and kind of, okay, we can't really understand that. It's bigger than we are. We're not going to go there. And although that is true, the part that we can go to when we're looking at lunar aspects is that in the North Node, or Rahu, we know that that is the evolutionary direction the soul is headed. We know that it is in large part the soul intention for its incarnation this particular lifetime. And knowing that the sign it's in, the house it's in, and what aspects that house and those planets tell us the nature of the incarnation, what's important to it. Now, bringing that from the ethereal and the conceptual into a grounded interpretation requires us to understand the sentient nature of our physical senses, hearing, seeing, smelling, touching, waking, sleeping state, the state of health, the state of unhealth, etc. Those subtleties of life is what brings the nodal into the practical sphere. For example, all aspects 
of our nodes always oppose one another. And we know that if your Rahu is in your fourth house, your north node, then the 10th house is where K2 or your south node is. Conceptually, we know that that soul is here to ground itself in the physical realm, specifically domestically in its home through property that it owns to ground itself physically in the world. Now, regardless of the other aspects in the chart, because we're talking about the nodal axes, it's going to have a holographic effect on the entire chart as it relates to its incarnational purpose. Everything is ultimately pointing towards that in their own way based on other aspects of the chart. But if you could just imagine the young symbol, the circle with that arrow to the right, finding its ultimate purpose in this earth realm, steering towards it, pointed towards it, and finally incarnating as the physical form of the cosmic calculus that makes up our entire chart, which is our internal wiring kind of laid out, splashed upon the stars and constellations that we can read and interpret, we will see that the North Node and the nodal axes in general give us a look into how to ease the internal stresses of that life incarnated purpose. So regardless of what it is, there will always be stresses associated with it, issues of insecurity, self-esteem, and how we are experiencing that incarnational purpose on an individual basis. So with our example, with the North Node in the fourth house, dealing with domesticity and the mother, there will be challenges associated with the home and the mother. There will be stresses associated with that because that is the stuff that evolution is made of, that conflict, that yin and that yang purification process that occurs. So just looking at that, we can see that there will be opportunities throughout life to grow and evolve, which can be seen in the chart. To further ground that, we want to look at what your chart is telling you about your health, what your chart is telling you about your career, about your relationships, how you see the world, finances, and spirituality because it's going to inform the strengths and the challenges associated with that. As we do that, returning back to the subtleties of our waking dreaming state, our clairs, you know, clairvoyance, our, our, our clear seeing, our clear feeling and touching, clear sentience, clear audience, those extra sensory abilities, what happens is our unique strengths in those areas are constantly offering us information, tools, and guidance about how to confront, remedy, and transform those challenges and those stresses. So let's say, for example, with the North Node in the fourth house. One of the aspects is to have a six house everyday life uh, situation where the sun is there. Or, 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 or I'm not going to get too deeply into the example because there's so many uh, variations, but let's just say that in your everyday life, um, you're, you're very um, focused toward what you want to do. You're very clear about what you want to do, but maybe in your career, there's some conflict for one reason or another. That's going to create a challenge perhaps in creating the necessary revenue to get the home that you want to feel grounded. That is going to work for you to feel that domestic grounding. And so with the South Node, or Leo and K2, there's going to be a tremendous 
tendency to want to fall back on that default, which is what the South Node is, the soul default, the many lifetimes that the soul has had in that particular energy, which is all about accomplishment, success, um, and career, and that sort of thing wanting to fall back into that, even in light of this lifetime, that being a challenge, there being some corners cut perhaps, or some illegalities perhaps, as it relates to acquiring the home that you want or dealing with maternal issues and that sort of thing. So that's how we can ground it a little bit further and look for opportunities with our dreams with how we are managing our sleeping life, you know, our circadian rhythms, are they really supporting us in a way that we feel energized enough to fulfill what we need to fulfill, to acquire what we need to acquire, to feel grounded. If we need to be a bit more creative than what the present lifestyle is in acquiring a home, do we need to perhaps be a little bit more intuitive with regard to what may be other opportunities to acquire those things. Maybe there are people that um, are wanting people to uh, do some house sitting around your area, but you really haven't tuned into that. But there may be some intuitive guidance in that area where you could easily do that. The soul is always downloading intuitive information to us. And it is through our sentient voices, feelings, and unctions that we can connect to exactly what it is that we need to fulfill those things. And so that is what we look at in a moon reading as it relates to the nodes. We look at where those strengths could possibly be for you. Some people have more of a an ability to hear. They may have clear audience based on the fifth chakra prevalence of mercury energy uh, throughout their chart. That kind of thing is what we're looking at in a moon sign reading. That's the um, perspective that we are able to gain a clear view into how to use your sensitivities, how to identify them and work with them to fulfill your practical needs that the soul has in this lifetime for you to feel the balance and the equilibrium that you need within yourself as you deal with this very challenging issue of mama drama trauma. For more information about Mama Drama Trauma, visit mamadramatrauma.info.